Hey, listen, thank you so much for watching the video. Uh, what you're about to see is, without a shadow of a doubt, the most important video that I've ever put out on YouTube. It is undoubtedly the most personal story that I've ever told as well. And it's not just my story, which is what makes it so personal. It's got a number of key figures in it. Um, first and foremost, the centre of it is my dad. So... Lots of you will know my dad, whether you've watched Redmen TV over the years, or maybe some of you watch my Champions League final vlog from a few years ago. voice and broadcast and wonderful outlook on life and football just a you know a joy to listen to and funnily probably the most popular <laughs> member of the red men tv extended sort of cast uh, is john machin and that i guess is where most people sort of knowledge of him ends but you know this is a guy who yes look he's the reason why i'm here he's a reason well <laughs> for a number of reasons but you know important ones but actually in a footballing sense look he's the guy who made me a liverpool fan look that smug kid there in his 1989 Liverpool home shirt, that's me. Uh, the reason I'm a Liverpool fan is because of that man. Um, but he was an inspiration in a number of ways. Not only did he get me into football, but he got me into comic books and science fiction, you know, many a, a, an afternoon. Or he even was like, yeah, son, this is Akira. Watch Akira. And I'd be like, wow, Dad, I'm 11. That's far too violent for me to really understand what's going on there. And he'd be like, son, this is Watchmen. It's a deep... Um, <laughs> A superhero related um, postmodern thriller and I'm like I'm 12 I don't really understand the subtle subtext to all of this but wow yeah sure go ahead but he, he had a massive impact on it and one of the major things that he did in terms of inspiration was one day he handed me this now what is this tattered piece of cardboard you may say well this is a manuscript for a book and that book is called The Man Who Stole the World Cup it was a book that my dad wrote in the 80s um, it's wild. And he handed this to me and said, I wrote a book. Would you like to read it? And I was probably about 11 or 12. And I said, yeah, sure, go ahead. Um, and I absolutely adored it. And this thing has literally stayed in my possession since the early 90s. There's two copies of this in the entire world. Um, one of them stayed in the loft in his house. One was in the loft of my house. And throughout that period, it's sort of been burned into my brain this whole time. Two things. A, it's possible for someone in my family to sit down and write a full story, write a book, a novel, um, just create something off, out of their own brain and, and you know, put it down on paper. Um, but also, yeah, this idea that I, I, I love the story and it's I've carried it with me figuratively and literally for that in, entire time, really. So that's that part of things, which I think is, is cool and I will expand upon that a little bit more in a second. The origins of this are even more interesting in its own way. It was written uh, for a science fiction competition by my dad uh, and sent off and got you know, pretty good feedback at the time. His plan was then to basically expand upon it, get it finished, because this is very much a first draft. Um, but what happened um, around that time was my mum's brother, my uncle Tony, died in rather tragic circumstances. And what my dad was left with then was me around... I think around six years old that had been at the time. My mother absolutely heartbroken in, in bits and pieces. And then having to sort of you know, take care of his kid, take care of his wife and do his job as well. And my dad at the time um, and was for his entire working career worked in the social services department at Liverpool and some of the most deprived areas of the city. You know, some of the stuff that he had to go through and had to see and had to experience the stuff that he would never even talk about and never even tell me because it's the kind of stuff that no one should have to see no one should have to live through but some people do and some people step up to the plate and, and do that kind of thing and that's the kind of man that my dad was so this the dream the thing that he wanted to do the thing that he wanted to be almost so he wanted to take his place amongst some of the greats you know of, of people writing in, in science fiction and, and fantasy and you know and just general fiction had to be put on the back burner and yeah you know this is a legacy that i've carried with me this sort of whole time part inspiration but part frustration uh, because while I've been able to live a lot of my dreams I've you know taken that inspiration and gone okay well it's possible for for a lad from Liverpool to to be creative and and, and do something with it 
uh, which fun fundamentally changed me as a person. Um, he's not been able to sort of live that. And what happened is, of course, you know, you go through your life, you work in life, and life has a way of getting in the way. Life is what happens when you're busy making other plans, as John Lennon once said. Um, and so he's reached retirement age, and his dream then was to get back, get back to writing, hopefully get something published. And this is where the, the sort of most important and almost the most horrible twist to the tale comes, really, and why I'm here today. Around 18 months ago, um, my mum received a, a diagnosis uh, of dementia. Um, and I, I don't know how familiar you will be with that as a, as a disease, but often it's seen as something that only really affects older people and you, you know you naturally think oh you're slowing down or whatever but you know I know plenty of people who are older than me and dads who are you know do it happens it happens at all I'm in my 40s and I can feel myself not quite as sharp as I was but when someone's got it it's tangible it's noticeable and it's been very quick as well and all of a sudden this absolute powerhouse of a woman this sort of bright intelligent sharp on it like hero Again, the, the, the planet, the centre of the sun around which our family sort of um, orbits has been on this sort of nosedive of, of, of mental deterioration over the last 18 months. And this isn't just a, a person. It's not just my kid's grandmother or, or my mum. It's my dad's partner, you know, and all of a sudden he's got to be more on it. You know, the reason why he's not been at the football as much and the reason why he's not been as involved with Redmen is because He's got to take care of his partner, and that for me, someone who's married and you know, and 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 has a, a close life partner in that regard, the idea of losing that person bit by bit is just beyond horrible, beyond just you know. I mean, just a little bit on my mum. This is, this is a woman again who's a teacher for her entire working career, um, head of the special needs department at a school in Croxteth in Liverpool. Another person dedicated their life towards helping other people. And the reward is to get to retirement age and effectively, you know, be told that now that's it. You know, your life doesn't begin at 65. Your life is the beginning of, of the end. And yeah, um, so this is why it's a personal tale and, and, and why I, I'll be honest, it's, it's uncomfortable talking about it in public because in reality, it's it's their business. But the problem is, of course, is that the real reality of that is that, I, yeah, this is my dad and, you know, this is my mum and they need help they need support now what we've been able to do and what my wife will do my, you know, my wife is a very proactive very practical person she stepped up in a number of ways my sister stepped up in a number of ways you know friends and family sort of rallying around what I have chosen to do and maybe this is just a window into my own personal brand of insanity um but I thought it was right for me to try and help in two ways um what I've done and what I did last year was I turned this into this. This is the 2324 finished version of that book. I took that manuscript, the one that has been hanging around my loft all this time, um, began typing it up into a digital version. And then the process sort of added to it, helped with rewrite, helped get it to a finished sort of state because. In my head, this story existed as sort of an 11, 12-year-old boy. And I filled in all the blanks, all the blanks that weren't really there, that hadn't been written. It wasn't in a final sort of state. It had a beginning, middle and end, but it was very much a first draft. But the beauty about being a kid is that you don't see the, the edges and the, and the margins and the creases and the, the tipex marks in there. You just see the story. And it's often how you think back to like the nostalgic ways, think back to the cartoons or the TV shows that you grew up on. If you go back and watch them, you watch them now and you're like, oh, that was a bit rough around the edges. But nostalgia is a wonderful tool. And yeah, your own child, childlike imagination fills in those blanks. So what I was sort of able to do was pull from that experience and help round this story out. And yes, here we are, the man who stole the World Cup. Um redrafted final manuscript and so why great thanks paul for telling me this story thanks for letting you us in on your bit of you know stress and heart and heartbreak and you know all this kind of stuff why well ultimately what i'm doing with this my mission moving forward in the coming weeks and months this is going to be a thing i'm going to get this printed 
I am turning this in to a premium hardback book, something that, you know, my dad can be proud of, my mum can be proud of, my dad, I can be proud of, my dad, I can be proud of myself. Everyone can see this wonderful man and this wonderful story out in the real world. Um, so, yeah, why am I telling you this now? Why not just do it? Well, ultimately, these things cost money. And, and we need support and we need not just our help and the help of friends and family, but support of the wider world as well now obviously you see lots of causes out there there's a cause a day a million causes and i know it can be it'd be hard you can be swamped by them what will what we've done and what i've always sort of felt is it's not about just asking for handouts or charity or whatever we're making a book we think the book's really good and if you can go on kickstarter you can back this book into existence so you, you know if you feel compelled to help just from that perspective that's awesome that's lovely that you know that is you know, phenomenal, you're, you're a brilliant person and, you know, people should sing songs and make statues of you. But we don't just want that. If you want the book, you want to read the book, you want to see the story. And this story is amazing. This is a story for younger children, teens, young adults, into adulthood. It's a story that's, that will resonate with people who ever, you know, had a dream and had the, wanted to go on an adventure or been on childlike adventures. Two kids, Joe and Andy from Liverpool. Joe, uh, Joanne, the Liverpool fan, just wants to go and follow Liverpool Football Club, led by a hero, Kenny Dalglish, to a League and Cup double in 1986. And Andy, little rogue blue nose, cares more about completing his comic book collection than his reputation as being a, a thief and a bit of a bad lad around the estate. And they get pulled into this time travel adventure, proper Doctor Who vibes with it, that sends them throughout the history of football, meeting mysterious people along the way, and embroil in the plot to steal the Jules Rimet World Cup trophy in 1966, and what effect that going missing could potentially have on the future of the game, and it leads to, you know, we've got a lot of multiversal stories doing the rounds now, we've got a lot of comic book stories doing the rounds now, written in 1986 about the multiverse, um, fascinating futurism from my dad there um, but yeah two different universes at stake at the future because of the existence or non-existence of the world cup um it's brilliant fun i thoroughly enjoyed having my hand in it rereading it adding to it and rounding the story out as well um and hopefully you guys will too um the campaign is live now on kickstarter uh, there's a number of tiers where you can just get the book uh, so basically think of it as just buying a book effectively but the buying of it actually helps support the whole project um because the, the most un uh, unfortunate situation of all this is that look, lots of people suffer with these conditions and what have you the problem that mum and dad went through is that because of horrendous financial situations in the 90s or whatever they're in the 70s they're retired and they still got a mortgage hanging over their head and my ultimate mission with this is yes to help me dad fulfill his ambition um of becoming a published author something that he deserves something that he put on the back burner to help me become the man that i am today um but also quite plain and simply if we do well enough on this I think we can pay their mortgage off and give my mum and dad the freedom to choose how they spend their last months, years together. And that's where they're at right now. Heartbreaking and just ridiculously stupid as it is for me to sit and say this. Um, that they haven't got long to, together. Um, and I want them to be able to have the world. I want them to be able to have the life in their own hands. Um, yeah, if they want to go and sit on a beach somewhere, for six months then you know that's on them Let, you know i want them to be able to have that rather than have this sort of millstone hanging around their neck because yeah life is short time is short um and you've got to crack on and live the life that you can and they've given so much to so many people over the years um i yeah, i just want to be able to give them this um and look if you can help with that then that would be amazing but listen nothing for nothing um what we're going to do is give you a book uh, a really really good book a hardback book that looks beautiful i've got a couple of preview copies of it but the, it'll look well better than this but like the cover artwork i've got from yoni weisberg who did um our jordan henderson 10 years of red book cover he's done stuff for these football times he's done intro title sequences for match of the day um he's just a phenomenally talented guy he's given his time up for this uh for this cause and he's produced a piece of absolutely stunning artwork that has brought this whole project together um so yeah collaborative effort um but this is the beginning uh what comes is kind of i'm putting it out in the world i'm terrified i'm nervous 
I truly believe in this story. I've always believed in this story. Uh, but now we've got to put it out into the world and see if the world will believe in us and believe in our belief in the story, if that makes sense. So, yeah, uh, if you want to get involved, I'll put the link in the description underneath. Um, my dad's a very proud man, a very, very proud man. Old school scouse, doesn't like to talk about his problems or all those kind of things. So I'm doing it for him um, because I am a little bit more, you know, like that. Um but yeah, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video, to listen to this, and hopefully to go over to the Kickstarter and just have a look um, and see if you fancy it. Uh, if you back it, you'll get the book sent out to you. Hopefully, we should have them ready to go by August um, because, yeah, it's written. It's there. It's there. I just need to basically make it look really, really good, and your help will help with that. Um, okay. Thank you so much. You guys are the best. Um, and, yeah, more updates will follow on this, of course. But, yeah, link below. Thank you so much.